it's that time. Christmas time is here and that also means it's time for Christmas vacation projects here on my channel. So if you love the Griswolds as much as I do, grab your eggnog and some jello and settle in for these projects because it is going to guarantee you the hap hap happiest Christmas. This is Whiskey and Wit. My name is Whitney and it is no secret that I absolutely love Christmas Vacation. This is the fourth year that I have been doing a dedicated video with projects that pay homage to the movie. I know so many of you have been looking forward to this video so the wait is over. Let's kick it off with the first project. I'm going to show you how easy it is to make your own Aunt Bethany Jello. So it all starts with a bunt pan and I found this actually at the thrift store and I thought it looked the closest to the Aunt Bethany Jello from the movie. So I grabbed my assistant and we headed to Menards but you can get these at any home improvement store. This is Rust-Oleum fluorescent green. It was the closest I could find to the Jello. Then I sprayed three light coats onto the top to cover everything and you want to make sure that your spray paint is going to cover metal but it covered so well and it even gave it a nice matte finish which I wanted. Then I grabbed some air dry clay for cheap from Dollar Tree and I lucked out because it was actually this brown color. I couldn't figure out on the package what color it was, but I just used it to create a variety of shapes that you would typically find in cat food. So I pulled up an image, I made some fish, some circles, some triangles, I made some X's and I let them sit on a piece of paper overnight to dry. Once it dried, the color was perfect for cat food. I thought I might have to paint them, but the brown is perfect. So I just used my detail hot glue gun and applied it all around my faux jello mold to give it the true Aunt Bethany treatment. This thing is so fun and cute, and I'm going to have to find a small bump pan to make a tiered tray sized version because this is so cute. Last year I made a large sign that says Chicago, Illinois, Griswold, eggnog, and because I'm from outside of Chicago, I wanted a milk carton one, so I found this Milk for Santa from Michaels, and I just quickly spray painted it white to give it a neutral base, and then I grabbed out my Cricut Joy to cut out this free cut file that I will have for you over on my blog if you want to make this as well. It is a moose head as well as the Griswold eggnog logo that I created. I applied it with my paper transfer tape from Expressions Vinyl so I didn't mess with any of the spray paint or peel it off. And this was good to go. It is the perfect size for a tiered tray. I also picked the red one versus the white one at Michael's because it had flat sides instead of the cookies being raised. Also with this year's new video comes some fun new printables. I am learning how to draw more on my iPad with the app Procreate. And so I decided to do a lot of different characters from Christmas Vacation and create some fun files for you guys. I print them on just regular white cardstock that you can get at Michaels, Joann's, Hobby Lobby, pretty much anywhere. And I printed these on my HP printer, super quick and easy. Trim them, pop them either in a frame or on to a bulletin board. And we've got some really fun, quick, easy, and cheap decor that is Christmas vacation. Another fun project with printables is this fun Jelly of the Month Club jar. So I went ahead and measured the height and the width all the way around of my jars I wanted to put this on and I created these labels. It's similar to the labels I made for Finn's birthday that I put on the soup cans but this time we're just putting them on jars. I printed it on cardstock and then I cut it out and left a little tab on one of the ends so then that way I could overlap them and make sure it looked like a real label. If you want it to truly look like a label, you can also laminate it as well, but I ran out of laminating sheets, so this is how we're doing it. I just used simply some double stick tape to apply it to a Dollar Tree jar. This came from Courtney over at Creative on the Cheap. She sent it to me in a fun box and it was perfect for this project. Once it was applied, I just cut up some felt strips so that it looked like there was something inside. It kept it lightweight for my tiered tray, just shoved in the little pieces, put the lid on, and that was good to go. One of the sides says great for employee gifts and this other side says the gift that keeps on giving. So there's a ton of nods to the movie in both labels and then I also made a larger one that you could put on a jelly jar. I just got this from my Jewel Osco which is an Albertsons Safeway company. I just used their signature brand and put it right over their label. Nice and easy so you can have actual jelly or a smaller faux one like this from Dollar Tree. Quick and easy, super fun. 
Now you might remember from last year, I made over this Target RV into Cousin Eddie's RV, and I really wanted a Griswold car, but I couldn't find the size I wanted. Well, the other day we were shopping at Aldi, just getting our groceries, and I found this one. I was so excited. You can find similar ones also at JCPenney. If I can find something similar, I will link it down below. The first job I needed to do was remove all of these little embellishments, so the lights and the wreaths and everything, and then I popped off the little wire pieces hooking them on. Then I taped off anything that I didn't want to have to paint again, so the bumper, and I also did the side panels of the car. I also took a jewel bag, just a plastic bag, cut it in half, and then wrapped it around the wheels so I didn't have to worry about getting spray paint on those as well. I used the semi-gloss hunter green from Rustoleum to cover the entire thing, really anything that was still exposed. I did three light coats and then let it dry. When I pulled the tape off, I realized there was a little bleeding, but it was no big deal. I could just touch it up. And then I also decided to paint the center of the wheels black instead of red because the car was no longer that color. Then what is a Griswold car without a huge honking tree on top? So I got two of these picks from Hobby Lobby last year. I just reused them from another project, but they have them this year. You can use whatever greenery picks you have on hand. I just decided to cut these apart and then re-glue them on to make a really wide, thick tree like they have in the movie. When I got to the top, I had my nice fluffy tree and then I used some jute twine and wrapped it through the open windows on each side of the car in a zigzag pattern to match how they strapped it to the car in the movie. I really like how this turned out. I went back and forth on if I leave the side gray or do it brown. I like the silver personally because it goes with the bumper, but you could paint that brown if you wanted that as well. You could also paint the car that purpley mauve color that the car is in the movie. I think it looks awesome with the RV and I love how this next project turned out to go with them, a Cousin Eddie and a Clark. I was in Ikea the other day and I found these $10 little artist figures and so I grabbed two of them because they were posable and I didn't have to worry about a face. Then from Dollar Tree I grabbed a bar mop towel and one of these velvet scrunchies but you could get any green type of fabric and if you can't find the bar mop towel you can also use a baby hooded towel. So let's start with Cousin Eddie. We're going to grab that bar mop towel and we're going to lay it out with the side that you want to be the outside facing up. So we're going to do this inside out first. We're going to put him in the center and fold it over kind of like a cape. And then once it's where it needs to be, I took some yarn because I'm not a sewer, so this is what I had on hand, a doll needle and some yarn. And I sewed the up the sleeve and then down the side of the body. And then I repeated the same step on the other side. Once you've sewn both sides, pop it off of your little doll form and trim off the extra of the towel at the bottom. Then we're also going to trim up the side of the body and out of the sleeve so that it looks like an actual sleeve now. And then we're gonna flip it inside out because we sewed it on the opposite side. Now I followed a tutorial over at, I think it's called My Froggy's World. I will link it down below, but she makes a ton of different doll things. And I used a lot of her tutorials for these things so I could figure out how to make doll clothes. So once the robe is flipped around, we're gonna put it back on Cousin Eddie and we are going to trim it down just to make sure that it is kind of that like awkwardly short length that it is in the movie. And then I cut another scrap piece of my towel to be the tie for the robe. If it doesn't sit how you want, just take some hot glue and glue it down. Then for his little socks, I used some Dollar Tree kids gloves, cut off the thumbs, slid them onto the feet of my doll, and then glued them on the back because I had to open it to get it around the foot. Now for his signature hat. I took that scrunchie and I cut a decent sized piece. I flipped it inside out and then I tied the top of it to create the closed top of the hat. Once it's tied, I flipped it back inside out and put it on his head to make sure it was the right size. Then I started cutting, so I cut two flaps for either side and then flipped the front flap up so it has that little lip that he's known for, glued the hat onto his head, and then finished off the robe with a blue paint marker to give it that signature look. Now for the tube coming out of the RV, because we know he has to empty the thing that I don't want to say on YouTube so I don't get in trouble, but you know the quote, I spray painted these at Dollar Tree Kids Toys a bright orange color. I think it's called Creamsicle from Krylon, and that was ready to go. Then for Clark, I took some scrap plaid fabric to make his shirt that he wears with his vest when he is out putting the trees on the house. 
and I am not one to teach how to make doll clothes. I really just fumbled my way through this, but I just glued together kind of what you would think pants would look like. That shirt I had to cut it open, as you can see, because I couldn't get it to fit on. So again, stumbling through it, but I used some felt for his little vest. I cut it out and then cut two holes approximately where the arms would be. And I was able to put that on and then glue it down kind of to his stomach area. So it didn't look like he was like on spring break. Then I also used my Froggy's World tutorial on how to make a doll hat. I used some felt and it actually came out pretty good, but again, I am not the person to teach you how to do that. So I will link the video if you wanna check that out. I glued a piece that says bears on the front because you guys know I am Chicago area native. And so I definitely wanted to make sure that made it in there. And then I also used some air dry clay to make a beer can and glued it to Cousin Eddie's hand. I love how these turned out and they actually aren't super difficult and they aren't super expensive. So if you were looking for like a Pop Funko, but you can't find it or they're super expensive, this is an alternative. And this goes really good with my little Griswold illumination truck I made in the mystery box. You guys have to let me know down below how do you think I did. I love them, but you'll have to let me know. Now on top of DIYing, I usually pick up a couple of fun items that are National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation related. I usually can find a lot at Kohl's, but this year I found this winner at Big Lots with this cute little acrylic wine glass. It comes in a set of two and I love that it's plastic because it would be great for parties. I also found a ton of different things on places like Amazon and I also found some really fun small business finds. So I wanted to share those with you first so that I can support and get the word out for some small businesses. I'm trying to shop small more for this Christmas. So I wanted to share these with you because if you're watching this video, you love the Griswolds as much as I do. Up first are these hand illustrated ornaments. They are wood from Brad Albright on Etsy. I grabbed this Grizzled Family Station Wagon as well as the Santa with the list from the beginning of the movie. I love them, they're great quality. And I also picked up a cute elf one as well. So check for all the links down in the description. My second small business is the Happy Headband Co. If you see me wear headbands in any video, chances are they are from there, but she released a Christmas vacation one, so I knew I had to get it, as well as this cute Mickey gingerbread one. You can wear these twist ones forward like this or flip them around, and these are a staple when I am crafting for the holidays. I was able to find a couple items on Pottery Barn, part of their Christmas vacation release that wasn't a million and a half dollars. Some of their stuff is insane, but I picked up the coffee mug moose head and then also this coffee mug with the house and the Santa on fire, the sleigh going over the mug. This is gonna be my daily mug and this one I'll probably use on special occasions. Check the links, they have been going in and out of stock. At Big Lots, I was able to find some awesome party supplies like the acrylic mug I mentioned as well as these glass mugs. You can also find things like these at Kohl's typically. And I also grabbed this punch bowl, which I love that the ears detach because you can just put them in there for easy storage. These Target Dollar Spot bulb jars are so cute. The bottom twists off. I ended up grabbing these Wonder Shop lights that actually have a timer. They're just battery operated. I put them in there. It glows so nicely and it is beautiful even if you don't want it to be Christmas vacation themed. I got the squirrel last year from Amazon and this year I grabbed a Rottweiler plush for snot. And to make it super official, I put this tinsel around his neck that matches the movie when he is chasing the squirrel around the house. Every year, Hallmark slash Amazon, because they sell Hallmark products, have awesome ornaments. So I picked up this one. This is a 2022 ornament. And I also was able to get the Griswold house when I went on the trip with everybody to Denver. We went to that Christmas store. So this has some extra sentimental value for me. Now these are my new favorite. They are not cheap, but I collect these. So these were kind of a splurge and you get all of these, you hook them up to a power source and they basically recite the whole scene, all three of the ornaments. It's awesome. We're kicking off our fun old fashioned family Christmas by heading out into the country. It looks great, a little full, a lot of sap. This Hallmark card would be perfect for anyone that loves the movie and to send some love if you can't be with somebody this holiday season. It is super beautiful and the best part is you push the side button and you get this. Oh, 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 
it lights up it sparkles so nicely and the best part is it folds back down for storage if you want to use it as decor I shared this on my Instagram story and you guys bought so many of them. This Clark Griswold blanket is nice and cuddly and I plan to watch the movie so many times with it this winter. These little people I got on sale back in August because they had just launched them. I think it's hilarious that Cousin Eddie is Ellen's cousin on the side, but they're nice and fun and Finn likes to steal my Pop Funkos so I thought this would serve multiple purposes. Now I wanted to add a Cousin Eddie hat to a setup so I ordered this from Amazon and I'm just putting it on a pillar within my setup. It's nice because it looks like Cousin Eddie just kind of left his hat there and you can also just wear it for the winter. It's nice and warm and it fits my large head. And I can't forget this jersey that I'm wearing. I bought this a couple months ago. I live outside of Chicago, so we're Blackhawks fans anyway. And I was able to get this for like 35 bucks. I'll put the information down below. Usually as it gets closer to the season, things get more expensive, but it's got the double zero Griswold on the back. So I love this. It was fun and festive for this video as well. For the past two years, I have wanted to make a quote garland for Christmas vacation and I have not done it. Well, this year is the year. I found this felt garland at Home Goods, and I knew this was going to be the base. Then I went on Etsy and found a site that sells individual wood cutouts and you can pick what you want. And these are about a dollar a piece and I ordered them from a woman owned Etsy shop. So I will link that all down below with the shapes that I got. But I went through and painted them all the way I wanted them all the way down to the RV to match the colors. Then I picked the quotes that I wanted to correspond with each of the shapes. So this one is a pill bottle. So obviously you see what quote that is. And then some of them needed a little extra oomph. So I added some details with a paint marker. Then before I strung them up, the last step was to cut some strips of felt, just like little rectangles. And then I glued them onto the back, creating a loop. So I glued the top, inserted my little weeding tool, and then glued it around it just to make sure that the opening stayed open. Then I was able to use those as little hooks to string up my garland and not have to drill holes into the wood. So now here is where the felt garland comes in. I cut it apart and took the felt balls off and then I just used some Dollar Tree white twine to string it back up. I did a pattern of like two of the white balls and then I incorporated some of the trees because I don't have enough trees to go like tree wood piece. It ended up turning out so cute and I made way too many so I had to do two layers of a garland. But I actually might display this laying on top of a garland like this instead of hanging it. I think it looks so fun. It is all of my favorite quotes from the movie and the great part is you can customize this. So you definitely don't need to do as many as I did but I think this is so fun and this basically encapsulates all my favorite parts of the movie in one project. I love it. Now some of you guys laughed at me on my Instagram when I told you grab this if you want a Christmas vacation DIY with me, but watch what I did with it. I spray painted the whole thing matte white and then made sure it was fully dry. I also grabbed one of these wood round signs from Dollar Tree. You could also probably use a pizza pan for this or foam board cut in a circle. I painted it nutmeg brown, but you can stain it or do whatever you want. And then I cut out this file that I designed with the famous quote between Clark and Todd Chester. So I did Todd's quote in red and applied it to the top part of the circle and then Clark's in green. I designed it specifically so it would curve with the circular sign and I also set my mask down to make sure it was spaced correctly. Once everything was applied, I went over with a quick coat of matte Mod Podge just to seal it all down because I had removable red vinyl and I didn't want it to come off. That was the only red vinyl that I had. Then I used a mixture of super glue and a little bit of hot glue to stick my mask onto the sign. I put the hanger back on and this thing was good to go. Now I don't plan on hanging it on my front door so be careful with that with hot glue. Now I had some of that air dry clay left over and I thought maybe I can make a turkey because it was the right color and I want to show you how easy it is if you want to make it too. Grab some of your clay, work it in your hands, and here you're trying to create essentially a shape that's the size of a strawberry. I then flattened kind of the top part and then curved it out so it looked like the body of a turkey. Next up, we're going to do the legs. So I took two bamboo skewers just left over from a project from Dollar Tree, and I cut them down to about toothpick length. I didn't have toothpicks, but you could easily use toothpicks as well. That's just why I cut them down. They don't have to be bamboo skewers. 
Then I created two pieces that were proportional to the body that looked like a turkey leg. And then on top of the turkey legs, I needed kind of a heart-shaped piece to go on the end of each turkey leg, which is the bone that sticks out. So then to assemble, I took my bone end piece on the non-pointy end of my skewer, and then I pushed that directly through the leg. This is gonna add some stability, even though it's gonna dry hard, it just helped get everything together. I did the other leg, and then I added two little wing pieces, and that also helped cover if my bamboo skewer popped out. And then I had to make it look super overcooked, like it was in the movie, hollow and just dry. So I took a screwdriver, kind of scooped it out, used my fingers to make sure there was a crevice, and then to make it look really dusty, grody, dry, I painted the inside black and then dusted the top with some silver so it just looks like it was burnt to a haul heck. <laughs> Once that was fully dry, this was the perfect size for my tiered tray, and I haven't done really anything with a turkey, so I think this turned out super fun, quick and easy, and you just wanna paint those back pieces white as well, but it looks so good on my little tiered tray. Last year, I shared with you guys how my tiered tray came together, and I wanted to share it again because so many of you said you got tips and tricks from it. So this tiered tray is from Amazon. I will have it linked for you. And I started with some Target Dollar Spot fairy lights in multicolor and I taped it to the bottom of the tray and then the top as well. That's gonna have it glow from within. Then I started with some of my bigger pieces, figured out how I wanted to cluster them. And then once everything's kind of where it is, right height, adding different layers, then I can start adding some additional small details. One of my favorite things to add for Christmas vacation are some light bulbs. So you can do Dollar Tree light necklaces like I'm showing here. You can also get some replacement bulbs from your hardware store to easily set in there. And it makes it really fun, festive, bright. I just love this. The Pop Funkos are ones I've had for years. Like I mentioned before, the price of things like this go up heading into Christmas so if you see them and see that they're like 80 bucks don't worry they aren't always that way and I didn't pay that much for it set a reminder for like February buy them and you'll have them for next year I also like to buy them around Christmas and July time because they aren't that expensive if you're seeing items on this tiered tray that I didn't show you today chances are they're probably from last year's video or the year before so those will be linked for you as well on a full playlist and if you've got questions on where I bought something if you can't find it just let me know in the comments I will get back to you. I just love this setup so much and it makes my heart so happy. That's going to do it for this installment of the Griswold DIYs. I cannot believe it is wrapping up year four. So if you recreate these, please let me know. I love to see my files and my different DIYs in your homes and your Christmas vacation setups. Thanks so much for watching. Hit subscribe if you're new so you don't miss a future Christmas video and I will catch you in the next one.